You hear All that? right. Yeah, go. that's how we do it. Point. Anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Again, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, so you're running in what district again? Uh, Florida, obviously, but uh, what district? Oh, yes. District number six for Congress in, in Florida. Uh, that's all of Volusia and Flagler counties and part of Lake and St. John's. My name's Richard Thripp, uh, or Dr. Richard Thripp, if you prefer. I have a PhD in education. I spent several years during the PhD and uh, last semester as an adjunct teaching future teachers about educational technology. Mm -hmm. uh, the most famous city is uh, the world's most famous beach, Daytona Beach in our mm -hmm. district. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right as far as the four goes. We have, uh, we have the NASCAR headquarters and we have uh, Embry Riddle Aeronautical University and uh, Bassoon Cookman University and uh, a lot of tourism. Um, a lot of people come here from out of town, spring break, uh, bike week. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you're running as progressive. Uh, have, yes. you always, have you always been a progressive, uh, Democrat, or? Uh, oh, you, uh, well, I'm, I'm actually formerly a Republican, and when I was so, I had. Yeah, I, I know. I get a lot of flack. Um, and, and it's something that I, I always had a, a, a lack of um, alignment between that and my beliefs, especially when I was doing my master's and my PhD, because I've always found personal finance to be a, pa a fascinating topic. Mm -hmm. So learning about uh, financial education and investing and, you know, how our economy works showed me that, you know, what we need is stronger regulation because we've been going in the opposite direction and it's hurting most people. Most people are getting a very bad deal. Uh, so I, I kind of, uh, my, my father and he, um, I lived with him like most of my life and he also homeschooled me. So there was some, which you, I would call an indoctrination. Uh, of course, you know, I, I could have, um, re revolted or rebelled against it earlier mm -hmm. and I should have, but you know, I'm happy now that I feel, you know, proud to be a Democrat and proud to be on, on the right side of history and, uh, fighting the good fight for, for the American people and for the whole world, because when it comes to, you know, the Green Party, uh, as you've uh, noted, and uh, the Green New Deal and, and the fossil fuel deal, which is killing everybody, it's, ki yeah. it's destroying our atmosphere, our lives are on the line, you know? Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm not quite sure where, uh, um, where the Democrats stand on uh, climate change right now. I, I understand that uh, they they did try to have like a vote or something like that, or at least Republicans try to force a vote on uh, the Green New Deal. And Chuck Schumer, I think, said that this is a trick, and so everybody voted to stay, and right to stay. It, it is the uh, the term they used to uh, not vote, but be able yeah, to stay or something. Yeah. yeah. They should have yeah. voted yes for it. I know. That was a while I, back, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, that was, I think that was the last time it actually came up mm -hmm. for a vote. Uh, right. And, now, now, AOC has the resolution in the House, and it's about, up to about 100 co-sponsors. Uh, and, you know, it needs, like, well, I mean, you can, I think the speaker can call a floor vote. I got to get more familiar with this. I can tell you, though, that, like, we have a much bigger um, platform if you look at our website. It's a lot more detailed because a lot of people running for Congress, they don't really give you a whole lot of detail. And you think yeah. running for office is a whole different set of skills from actually being in office. But yeah. we're going to do a great job at both. Uh, I, I'm a quick learner, you know, and we'll put a lot of our people who are volunteers now into paid positions. Um, when you become a, a congressman or congresswoman, you, you have a $1.4 million annual budget for, for staff and for offices and for um, uh, whatever you need to do. And so we'll put an office in Midtown Daytona Beach. We're going to do a lot of constituent services, helping locals with Social Security, you know, Veterans Affairs, the IRS, uh, you know, passports, and so forth, immigration. Mm. Now, have you ever have you put much thought as far as legislation you would want to try to get passed? 
Oh, yes. Uh, I'm going to, of course, co-sponsor a, a bunch of bills and resolutions like the Green New Deal and Medicare for All. Uh, I looked at all of the ones that the uh, the progressive Democrats of America are in favor of, and I agree with all of them. I will co-sponsor all of those bills. Uh, one of the things that I want to do besides, um, I, I want to have uh, advocate for universal health care for all Americans. And whatever we can get that gets us closer toward that. And so I think if you have, there's a bill called the Incentivizing Medicaid Expansion Act, and it never gets passed. But what it does is it takes the Affordable Care Act and changes it. So now states could get 100% of a federal match instead of 90. Because if they started in 2014, from there to 2016, it was, it was 100. And then it declined. So now it's 90. Well, if we put it back to 100, then there'd be more of an impetus, a push for like Florida to, to opt in finally. And the reason they, they would do it now is because the, the public sentiment is really changing. Uh, Oklahoma just voted in favor of, of expanding Medicaid, even though they're a deep red state, because everyone is seeing how it is very important. It, it, it helps people to get the medical treatment they need. It actually keeps rural hospitals, you know, going. They have a steady stream of, of customers, patients, and of income. And uh, even a nurses union, the big nurses union is in favor of Medicare for all, and as well as, you know, Medicaid expansion and uh, lowering prescription costs. Oh, but I was saying one of the things I want to do, you don't hear a whole lot about it, is to expand the IRS. Our internal revenue service has actually got fewer people now than it did 10 years ago, even though they have so much more to do. Up until recently, there were a lot more people on the payrolls and more, you know, business activity. Um, and in addition, they have to do the, the health care, you know, with the uh, Affordable Care Act. They don't have the staff or the computers are outdated, too. So you look, there's about a $450 billion tax gap per year, which is money that's left on the table uh, that they can't collect. And they don't go after people who are super rich, like people who are very high earners and top businesses. A lot of times they just don't get audited. Some of them don't even file. Like there's millionaires that don't file and nothing happens. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they probably filed because a lot, a lot of the business uh, um, investment are probably under uh, personal finance, not necessarily business finance. And so there, I, I know that there's a separation between the two. So on um, one, you can only claim so much on there as a whether if you uh, if you lose money based on those uh, investments, if you lose yeah. uh, if if it's under personal finance then maybe they can uh, write that as a personal loss and not a business loss. Well, there's been some studies or news articles coming out just saying that people who are like earning, uh, I guess they're either a millionaire or earning quite a bit per year. A lot of them aren't filing at all. Not for the, you know, not even filing and, and they don't get anything happens to them. And the others are, but they're, you know, evading taxes illegally. And uh, I, I, wa I wonder if you, ha if you have bonds, uh, stocks and bonds and stuff like that, would you have to claim those? Yeah, I, I have studied uh, like financial literacy and investing, and I did my dissertation on that. So this is a very topic that I love. When, when you have stocks and bonds, uh, you have to report the um, uh, capital gains and dividends you have on them. Okay. So uh, yeah, the way they're taxed though is different. Because you look at like wages, like most people earn wages, and they pay 15.3% uh, for Social Security and Medicare tax payroll tax. Yeah. Uh, actually, half of that is paid by the employer, like behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're, you're working for $10 an hour, your, your employer is paying 70 cents, 77 cents an hour extra behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But when you have like wealthy people, they, they, they don't usually make their money through wages. They, they do some of it, but they have, you know, real estate and stocks corporate equity, you know, mm. stuff like that, trust yeah. or whatever. And, and so they don't, they don't ever pay it. Like I, I heard, and I need to, I've been trying to verify this. I keep searching, but I think it's true that if Jeff Bezos wants to um, like, let's say give a billion or 2 billion to blue origin, because he's trying to get off his planet, you know, he like destroy the planet on the way off with all these carbon emissions and then get out of here. Yeah. He doesn't pay 20% capital gains tax. And that's low, you know, 20% is the long-term rate. Uh, it's lower than, than earned income. He actually takes a loan against his shares from a bank 
uh, that's more than happy to give him a low interest rate. And then he'd never have to pay that 400 million on, on 2 billion of, of um, equity that he, you know, takes a loan against. Well, I mean, uh, the, uh, anything that is anything that has like a logo of the, of the company on it, uh, uh, I know you have to uh, uh, claim that as far as like a business expense, but I also know that you uh, can subtract uh, some of the uh, funds you paid on there, right? Like a, like a business tax, uh, you, can, you can write that off. I try to uh, some of that. Well, if it's for personal holdings, then uh, you would typically have to pay capital gains tax. But if he's taking a loan against it, he doesn't. As for the business operations of Amazon, as you've heard, uh, Amazon avoids most federal income tax. They, they don't really pay much because they always plow the money back in. And, you know, they have accounting tricks that they use to say that they didn't turn a profit. Now, many businesses do this. I mean, sure, they are still paying taxes, but they are paying a lower rate than a lot of individuals are. Uh, and, and really, they're taking you know a lot out of the economy, but they're not providing for all, all that they're getting from the American capital markets and our infrastructure and you know the ability to sell to uh, Americans easily. And now. Uh what tax, what percentage of tax would you think that big corporations like that would have to pay in order to fund like Medicare for All, Green New Deal, and other stuff that would actually benefit this planet, benefit the uh, uh, citizens of the world, not just the United States, but the world? Yeah. Uh, how, how much of a tax do you think just in the United States and maybe on investment that are, that are uh, going out of the United States? Um, how much of a tax would you think? Be, be able to subsidize all that? Oh, um, well, I think it would have to be at least back where it was at 35% for the corporate tax rate. But you have to close a lot of loopholes as well. I know that I support UBI, universal basic income, but I haven't really got on board with the value added tax. I, I think that it seems that it's kind of regressive, meaning that it taxes people who are hardworking, like middle income, middle class and below mm -hmm. at a higher percentage than it should. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I think if you had a wealth tax like Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders proposes, that that would do a, a great job, but it's kind of tricky to implement. A lot of people will say, oh, it's going to um, be avoided. I, I, I think we can do better than we're doing now by a long shot. Like we need to repeal and replace the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. When I talk about the tax gap, that is just under existing tax law. Uh, you look at things like estate tax, like we should have an estate tax, which I know they propagandize as the death tax. But when they talk about, uh, this is Republican saying, oh, well, there's like a farm and then the farm, the, the older people died and the kids have to sell it because the tax is so much never happens like it's just made up it, it never occurs um so you look and you've had it, the wealth is not it's just it's just being accumulated in such a way that it should be captured because as a part of of the public good that the big companies are, are extracting from our country like you hear of course walmart when they have a walmart super center it's like a million and a half dollars a year of taxpayer subsidies going toward their employees medicaid and um food stamps and other social welfare benefits that the employees are eligible for because they're not being paid a living wage mm -hmm. uh you know why, why should that be like if that is happening then that needs to get charged back to walmart mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I, I'm kind of meandering, but overall, no, okay. like Medi <laughs> Medicare for all, uh, which I usually call universal health care for all Americans, because most of our voters in this district are senior citizens, or at least the average age is 59, or maybe it's the median, median age of voters. They don't understand sometimes that it's an improvement. They think, oh, I'm going to lose my Medicare. Well, no, Medicare for all is designed to enhance what you have now. You know, you won't have to pay a premium and, and prescription drug costs will go down and there's no deductibles or co-pays. Um, 
But anyway, the, the way, you know, it could work is that you'd have to kind of centralize, whereas now you've got all these overlapping and competing systems that are redundant, patchwork, holes in the middle, someone to lose their, their job, loses their health care. Well, the time they need the health care covered the most is when they don't have a job. <laughs> it's very, yeah. um, it's just a, a bad way to do things. It's, it's a concentrated risk. Um, and so if you were to consolidate that and centralize it, which a lot of people are against if they say, oh, we don't want big government. They can't manage anything. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we big government put men on the moon six times. We, we've built the, the transcontinental railroad. We've done so much. And I think that when you look at corporate businesses, which they always tell us, oh, we need to run the co- government like a corporation. Well, look how much that's done in Florida. In Florida, mm-hmm. we got this guy, Rick Scott. Uh, he's really bad. We got Ron DeSantis. He's also really bad. He's the former congressman for the district that I'm running in. And, uh, you know, the unemployment system here. A lot of people still don't have their unemployment. I was just on the Our Revolution Florida call and uh, state representative Anna Eskimani was speaking. She said they have over 20,000 Floridians have contacted her mm-hmm. that they haven't been able to get their unemployment benefits. That's with it being like privately contracted out for the system that was built, you know, to say, oh, we're doing it efficiently. Um, and then when you look at businesses, they're always merging and consolidating. And they say, oh, that produces, you know, economies of scale, removes redundancy. Well, we need to use that bargaining power in this country when it comes to medical care and disintermediate the insurance companies. Because the insurance companies, I mean, they'll still, people who work for them will have jobs, you know, just working if they want on Medicare for all. Uh, but you wouldn't have so much profits coming to them, you know, for the corporate executives and shareholders. And you'd also have a big uh, boost to the economy and to the well-being and prosperity of Americans Mm -hmm. and uh, also to entrepreneurship. There'd be a lot more entrepreneurship and innovation and ingenuity. Mm -hmm. A lot of people now are stuck in jobs that they hate just for the health care coverage. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to centralize taxes, though, like some of the taxes, like the unemployment, the, the, the employer uh, covers health insurance. It goes back to like World War Two when it was cheap. Um, I mean, they were allowed to do that instead of uh, there were like laws that made it advantageous for employers to offer health insurance. Mm-hmm. But it didn't come that way on its own. And you would have to centralize a lot of state level stuff like Medicaid, uh, how it's administered now would be federally overseen. But it's not a government takeover of healthcare per se, because you're going to have private providers that are actually reimbursed by the federal government. And they would still have the option to, um, I guess, like some of them would not participate and just treat wealthy people like Beyonce. Like, <laughs> that's a joke from. Uh, what, Jimmy Fallon? Which one is it? Jimmy Kimmel? I don't remember. <laughs> I, uh, I, I myself, I don't watch really nice shows yeah. as far as the part goes. I, I usually try and make my own as far as the part goes, but uh, I, mm-hmm. I, I, I do a lot of Facebook lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. good. I, I got a, we're doing one of those Monday night for a, a, a Facebook town hall on a, I think it's called Action Together Florida. Mm, so it's, okay. I haven't done one before. I haven't done too many events like that because I, I don't, I'm not too well known. But we are getting there. And I didn't tell you about our race yet, but here yeah, yeah. in Florida. So I'm a lifelong resident of Volusia County, born in Daytona Beach and, and lived there most of my life. And I commuted down to Orlando to go to University of Central Florida. Uh, actually, I did my bachelor's at Daytona because they had the psychology program there. But anyway, now I live on the, east, uh, the west side of Volusia County. Anyway, this district um, actually was considered a toss-up in 2018. The yeah. governor, the guy who's now governor, Ron DeSantis, was the representative of this district for three yeah. terms. And um, then uh, the Democrat who was running, she, I know her. Her name's Ambassador Nancy Soderberg. She's been very nice to me, giving me the time to, you know, give me some pointers usually she just tells me richard nobody's going to take you seriously because you don't have enough money you have to be on the phone like 10 hours a day calling and i, I don't do that i'm not good yeah. at being on the phone asking dialing for dollars yeah, yeah. anyway uh she had lost by about 13 percentage points and it was unexpected because i thought it would be a toss-up mm-hmm. but i think that 2020 is a different beast 
it's a different game now. And uh, I think with the coronavirus, I don't mean to, obviously there's a political advantage for the Democrats from it, but it's not something that anyone would wish for. Um, it's very tragic. You know, the way it's been handled is just horrifying from the federal level, the state level, the local level. We have people around here who are protesting masks. They're having like get togethers where they yeah. are, are protesting tyranny. How yeah. is that tyranny? I mean, this is like, it's not that hard and it's not, it's not a matter of partisanship or opinion, you know, yeah. they say, well, oh, the CDC told us not to wear a mask before and now they say to do it. So they're liars. It's like, well, they had it wrong before. Now they have it right. You know, the evidence has come out. There's been studies that have been done by um, professors and, and scientists that seem to show looking at other countries that if everyone or at least 80% of people are wearing a mask, it really cuts down transmission. I I, I read today that uh, marijuana may actually help with the infection. Uh, yeah. I, I, I read that, I want to say it was like six or more strains uh, that, that helps prevent uh, uh, infection in the lungs and other parts. So I'm like, mm -hmm. what, what can't this thing do as far as that part goes? It, it, it helps to prevent uh, cancer from spraying all that much. And it, yeah, I'm yeah. like, okay, great. But yeah, it's still, uh, it's still a schedule one. I mean. Uh, oh yeah, we got to get it legalized. I mean, if I could at least get it to put down to schedule three or four, that would be great. But I support full legalization federally of cannabis. I think that it actually dovetails with Black Lives Matter because when you look, there's so many people of color who are disproportionately incarcerated, suspected, you know, arrested based on a weed that really doesn't hurt that many people. And you don't have to smoke it. You can eat it if you want. I don't really like marijuana. I think it smells awful and I've never smoked it. Uh, mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, it's just ridiculous. And we have another candidate at a local level here, Niam, uh, Ryan Morales, who's built his platform on legalization statewide, you know, using yeah. state law. Yeah. But I think federally it should be done. And, uh, you know, it helps him a lot with his pain from an accident, a back injury, I believe. Mm. Um, and, and it's just, it's getting to a point now where people are really seeing that for what it is like, you know, cause it was kind of propagandized like reefer madness with a, a film yeah. from the 1930s. Well, the, yeah, the, that's the same way as what happened with the communism and all that stuff, you know, uh, that, yeah. it, it was the yeah. same era. I mean, Mm -hmm. the same the my, same. my mother is from China. I mean, she actually moved here after Tiananmen Square, the massacre. Yeah. I, I was born in 1991 mm -hmm. in Daytona Beach. But um, yeah, you know, we don't want to be like they are in China. It's authoritarian. But that just has to do with they've always had an authoritarian sort of government. Yeah. It's gotten a lot worse under Chairman Xi. So, Chairman Xi is very bad. So would you say that... Um, that is not the same uh, the philosophy of that, but the person who put it, who would put it in practice would be the the brains behind the authoritarianism part of it. Like in other words, uh, it, yeah, it, yeah, I, I would say theoretically, yeah, it's possible to not have authoritarianism, but have a society that actually you know allocates resources in accordance with what people need instead of what they per se earn. Now I'm actually a capitalist, so it kind of makes it kind of strange because I support, um, I believe in investing in corporations. Like I buy the um, S&P 500 and the total stock market index mm. fund. Uh, but I don't want to see corporations doing what they're doing, mistreating people, their workers, you know, underpaying them, throwing them away like garbage and destroying the earth. So they got to stop doing that. We yeah. need regulation and mm lawmaking that does that because right now most of politics and, and this cuts across party lines but i think the democratic party is headed in the right direction lately and is on the right side of history more so when it comes to the democratic party compared to the republican party but still they get all the money you know that comes in it's like usually big donors that have an interest and it's really legal bribery you know i mean you, i don't see how it, it is bribery. It's just a oh, lot form of bribery is allowed. Like, well, why is that? You know? Yeah. Uh, but uh, we're seeing a reversal here, you know, 
we could win this race with hardly any money, I think. And the yeah, primary, yeah. I told you, my, my opponent in the Democratic primary has no money, no ground operation, nothing pretty much. So I think we're going I, to win. How many volunteers do you have for, for your campaign? Oh, I would say we have about 20 that are very active. And then we have about like 80 people more who are volunteer here and there, like maybe mm -hmm. like deliver some yard signs or told their friends or, you know, mm -hmm. done some texting or gone out. We do canvassing, leaving um, door hangers on, on people's doors. So those are pretty cool, you know, trying not yeah. to catch coronavirus, which is in their door. Yeah, and yeah. It has like some of my policies, legalizing cannabis oh, yeah, um, and, and Medicare for all on it. And then we have the bumper sticker campaign. Uh, these are union made bumper stickers. They're very, we use yellow, very bright, stands out a lot. And our slogans change for the many. And then of course our yard signs, we've distributed uh, several hundred of these around the district. Uh, they're on corners, they're in people's yards, they're on like public, highly trafficked roads. Mm. And they really stand out. Yeah. Um, the poster is uh, my campaign manager from New York City, so she thought this would be a good idea. But it turns out these don't work well in, in, in Florida, which I, I should have known. And they also don't work during a pandemic. But I don't know, they're kind of cool. We might make them a collectible after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we didn't use yeah. them as much. Uh, yeah. You yeah. I mail out these cards, give them to people, and it's got a, a little bio on the back. And then we sent over 30,000 text messages as well mm. to uh, registered Democrats asking them to vote for me in the primary. Oh, I'm sorry. If I turn away from the mic, it's not going to hear too well. I mean, it's not going to sound. Yeah, I, I don't think it'll be, I think it'll be all good either way. Uh, okay. I, I, don't, I, I don't edit anything. So what, yeah. I would, what, yeah. I would, what I'll probably end up doing is I'll probably, I'll probably wind up uh, uploading the original portion of this yeah. as well, just so that there's context. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. So I was just saying that we sent over 30,000 text messages to registered Democrats. Some of those numbers were home phones because we didn't know how to filter them out. But we got a lot of responses and a lot of people very positive. We did not hear anybody saying that they even heard of, hardly anyone had heard of my opponent in the Democratic primary. I'm not even going to name him, but you can look him up if you want. But then after we beat him on August 18th, we're going to go up against Representative Michael Waltz. And he's only been in for one, this is his first term. Uh, he was a actual never Trumper in 2016. He ran ads against Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. But then in 2018, he comes down from, some say he's from Virginia Beach and others, he's very in tune with Jacksonville, which mm -hmm. is in the northeast part of Florida. Mm -hmm. Jacksonville's not in our district. And he, he bought a house with his mother in St. Augustine Beach, which also isn't in the district. He lives in a different congressional district. Uh, and so he ran, he actually put in 600,000 of his own money, um, which he uh, earned from selling um, surveillance and uh, port security systems in Libya, among other stuff, which I think is, is uh, I don't like it, you know, yeah. I want to, I think we need to cut back on militarism, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people are saying 10% cut. I think 10% cut should just be the beginning, you know? And I'm not saying that to be like against our military or against our soldiers, but I hear from a lot of veterans too, that, you know, these wars that we're involved in are not helping anybody. They're not yeah. helping. And, and you don't hear Michael Waltz, he does not say hardly anything about the Russians putting bounties on our soldiers' heads in Afghanistan, even though he was a Green Beret in Afghanistan. Uh, he was very high up with Dick Cheney. Now, where, where, uh, where did that news come from? Uh, in the New York Times, I believe. They broke that story, and then there was another uh, outfit that broke it as well. It was pretty recent, about mm. 22 you know, American soldiers killed, I believe, last year, 2019, in Afghanistan. Uh, some of them were, were, were assassinated you know, with the Russians promising to pay a, a big sum of money mm. for each one. Uh, so then, you know, they're just all like ignoring it. it it's crazy. Mm. I mean, uh, it's not, I, I don't think Russia should be used as a, as a ploy to have a bloated military budget, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it is a big deal. And, uh, now you have, I mean, you have so many things going on at once. Like there was a yeah. tropical storm that hit New York city and nobody even noticed, you know, <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even know about that until you just said something. Yeah, like, huh. that was like, oh, a few weeks ago. And then there's oh, a hurricane right. that's hitting like Corpus Christi area right now. Yeah, there's no, there's no climate crisis. 
yeah, where is the climate crisis? And people here in this district, there's a lot of people who think it's a hoax. But we have terrible hurricanes. Like when you look at Dorian, it was, uh, we were freaking out thinking it was going to hit here. It didn't, but it was, it, it looked like it. And if yeah. it did, it would have been catastrophic. And a lot of people who've lived there a long time will say, well, you know, Daytona Beach doesn't get bad hurricanes. Well, you know, they start the same thing in Mexico Beach. They start the same thing there and they got wall up with a category five, Matthew. Um, I mean, Michael. We got hit with Matthew here in 2016. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Michael hit them in 2018. Uh, so, you know, the oceans, as you know, are very hot. Um, yeah. They've got a lot of acidity and more heat. Mm -hmm. And in the atmosphere, of course, greenhouse gases, you've got your extra carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane, uh, what's the other one? Sulfur dioxide, chlorofluorocarbons, etc. When you have like extra water vapor in the air, it causes more rain, stronger hurricanes, more flooding. So, you know, we get hit with it worse. And I think one thing you got to hear a lot more about is manage retreat. There's a lot of places you're going to have to give up on, um, you know, low-lying areas, coastal areas. We're actually doing the opposite. We're developing them more. And it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And you've got to stop traveling so much. And I know I've traveled a lot too. I've went to China. I've gone to California many times to visit my mother. Um, but I think that coronavirus has been a wake up call for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. When you had, uh, and these are of course more privileged people who have jobs that are capable of being done from home. But before they were told you have to come to the office. And now a lot of people are working from home. We need to stick with that. Uh, academic conferences, uh, me, I, I am a three years of, of teaching at University of Central Florida and uh, many people, you know, will come fly all the way from South Africa, for example, to Orlando and then fly right back for an academic conference. We got to stop doing that, you know, and the cruises, cruises are really bad. Like I've been on a couple and my uh, wife likes cruises, but they put out so much, um, you know, they use really dirty fuel. Well, now we're not doing any cruises. So, you know, obviously we didn't need to. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Sure, exactly. people miss it. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that when push comes to shove, when your back's up against the wall, you know, we, we can cut out cruises. We can cut out all this flying. We can cut out, you know, all of these um, coal plants and, and fracking. Fracking has to, fracking is stupid. The, the fracking is, is, is uh, not profitable at all. The way it's done is because they take out money as a loan, very low interest, and uh, it's not profitable if oil falls. And when oil went down to like zero and below or even down to $20 a barrel, all of these operations are going bankrupt. In addition to them putting out all these gases, if you get natural gas that comes up as a byproduct, the natural gas they have no use for. So they burn it, they want to burn it off and, and the EPA under Donald Trump says, oh, go ahead, like do whatever. But when you flare the methane, um, the natural gas off, you produce tons of methane and additional, it's like triple the carbon um, greenhouse gas emissions. And then- How many, how many tracking? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but how many companies out there do you think that involved in, uh, in that, that kind of business uh, take out loans in order to either keep their business going or to start the business? Oh, I would say the vast majority, probably 99%. I mean, I don't think many of these businesses are operating just based on capital that they have. It's, it's mm. usually, uh, you know, taking out loans and, and, and certain sort of structuring, whereas well, they get a tax break to depreciate their equipment. And that was a big bonanza that was in the CARES Act, at least when it pertained to real estate, uh, $170 billion of tax cuts. A CNN story said one real estate mogul was popping a champagne bottle by the pool when the CARES Act passed on March 25th or 27th. Mm. Um, why would that need to be a bonanza for the wealthy? When we have people that are struggling in Florida, the unemployment system is a disaster and hardly anybody could get unemployment. Even now a lot haven't. People lost their homes. Some of them are living with their kids out of their cars. And, uh, you know, we're talking now about people needing to go back to work that, oh, people are lazy. Oh, we got to force kids back to school. It's just, it's, it's, it's um, I mean, I, I don't, I, I think it's approaching on genocide when you've got 150,000 dead Americans 
it didn't need to be this way. If you, and you know, Mary Trump said in a recent interview, her family, everything's about money in the Trump family. Well, you look at money alone. If you don't care about human lives, American lives, even money alone, you've cost, I bet, $50 trillion. I mean, you think about the alternative if we were to shut down early and stop coronavirus in its tracks as yeah. to what we have now, the, the losses are probably two to three years of GDP in the end. Yeah. Uh, do you think that, that uh, minimum wage should be tied to inflation? Yeah, I think it should be a minimum. Um, I support the fight for $15 per hour. Uh, I think that the current bill in the House elevates it to that in stages. So in 2025, it would be that. And, you know, inflation is usually the Federal Reserve targets 2% per year. So over five years, it's like 10.2% or 10.3. So then in, in, in five years, then 15 now will be like $13.50, uh, which is better than what we have now. Uh, some places they're paying that much already, but um, federally yeah, seven twenty five. dollars Yeah, but the, but the cost of living is, is growing fast and the, even mm -hmm. if they put tied to the inflation, the cost of living is, is growing even more. Me and my fiance had moved from Seattle to Ohio uh, because uh, yeah. the cost of living was too high up there. Yeah, Seattle is very expensive. My mother lives in the East San Francisco Bay Area. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she has a, a uh, I guess you call it a condominium, but it's only 800 square feet. And it's worth like $450,000. Mm -hmm. And if you put HOA is like 400 a month and then property tax is like, you know, the same. So you're looking at 800 a month, even though she's paid it off. That's a lot of money. Um, well, that's still cheaper yeah. than like nineteen hundred for for one for a, uh, for a studio in Seattle. Seattle basically. Yeah, but she owns it. Yeah, she's already well, paid it, her mortgage. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I'm saying that's cheaper in, in long run yeah. because she owns the property. She's only paying that much property tax. Mm -hmm. Well, she she bought in 04. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, I, I I agree that you know there was a recent study that said in Florida, in Florida, you need twenty four dollars an hour to get by. If yes. you're going to look at housing as like an apartment, and I think ideally it's supposed to be like 30, 35% maximum of your income. You know, a lot of people are having their housing cost 50% of their income, which is not good. It's yeah. too much, it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, and you look, our economy has the wealth, but the way the laws are made, it's like favoring uh, lobbyists and special interests write the laws basically and politicians get most of their money in a form of, of legalized bribery. I, yeah. I really think we do need financing of elections to be reformed. It's going to be very difficult to get done because of the um, they've put it as uh, being the Supreme Court said it was a First Amendment issue. Oh man, that makes it very difficult. Well, that, that's that's more or less about uh, yeah about the election, but not necessarily about the lobbyists. The lobbyists will go in yeah. there and like bribe whomever they want as far as the uh, the the actual vote on that day, as far as that part goes. I mean that the lobbyist rule, as far as that part goes, would have to be uh, would have to be reformed as far as far as it goes. Uh, but the yeah, I think in order for uh, the Supreme Court to, to have to reverse itself. Uh, I th I've heard that it has to be amended uh, according to uh, like the Constitution or something like that. that. Something has to be amended in order for that to actually take place. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I've heard too, based on them ruling that it was a matter of like free speech for uh, super PACs to be able to do unlimited spending. So a super PAC can come and um, spend like millions of dollars to help a candidate. And uh, that could money could all be coming from basically one person if you wanted it to be or it's just not, it's not right. Uh, I think though with the progressive movements that we're seeing like in my campaign and many others that there's kind of a, there's a backlash and that there will be a chance that even with the system as it is that we get more and more progressive candidates elected. With my race, it's kind of a golden opportunity here because uh, the person who was running, I'm only running against one democratic opponent in the primary and he doesn't have any, um, campaign apparatus. We have like a bunch of volunteers and mm. raising money on Equilu and he's not. We raised more money last week than he raised last quarter. 
And then uh, going up against Michael Waltz is a lot harder, of course, because he raised three hundred thousand dollars last quarter. But all of these money, that's all. All of this money is like twenty fifty six hundred per person, right? Because they can do like a primary and a general. And uh, then he's got. It's not in the district. A lot of it's coming from PACs like Big Sugar and NASCAR and defense industry. Uh, and then of course his own money that he isn't, earned from. Isn't that also what uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz is? Uh background is part of the program in different districts obviously different opponent but same industry is that right uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of overlap. Like if you look at uh, Congress, um, the the Democrats too are in favor of uh, military spending that is quite high. And a lot of it goes toward um, defense contractors that, that make up a, a lot of money without providing a lot of value. Uh, it's not good. It yeah. needs to change. Yeah, so she, uh, we have uh, Jen Perlman running against her. Uh, I would say that Jen Perlman's campaign you know, it's more a campaign of the people rather than a special interest. Yeah, I, I want to be careful to be not like as a, a Democrat to, to not try to do too much. I, I, I want to build unity, so I don't want people to get upset oh, with yeah, me and no, be like, no, yeah, oh, we're yeah. good. I can't imagine they're going to say we're going to support Walsh, so I mean, he's no, terrible. No. <laughs> no, actually, I was going to ask you, uh, have, yeah. have, you, have you worked with uh, other uh, districts, uh, pro uh, progressives that are, and have you worked along with them as far as the part goes while they're running? You know, like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, like do, uh, do get togethers. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had with the universal basic income supporting candidates. I've appeared on a lot of national stuff with them. Uh, a lot of them did not win their primaries, mm -hmm. but you know they've done a great job of raising awareness of that issue. And it would be an equalizing force, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also have uh, worked with some local candidates. Uh, I appeared with. Dr. Tom Wells in the third congressional district. He's running over there, you know, supporting uh, I, different I, candidates. I, I, I actually, I think I, I believe I have an interview with him uh, coming up too. Tom Wells, great, yeah. great, great. Yeah, yeah he, he wanted me to endorse in the primary, and I had to say, I'm not going to, because I don't want to make people too upset. A lot of people like Adam Christensen, and you know, okay. it's like, well, I, yeah. <laughs> actually, I think I'm going to be interviewing him too. Um, Hey, yeah, excellent. Down. Yeah, that one's a Ted Yo Ted Yoho, who just cussed out AOC, is the congressman for that district. And we actually know that district because my wife's twin sister lives in Ocala, which uh -huh. is that. Ted Yoho's retiring, so he wants to go out with a bang by, like, going on this rant against AOC, which I don't know why you would want to do that. It's just terrible. It's so rude, you know. But then there's 10, I think, 10 Republicans trying to compete and yeah. like three democrats that's a lot uh, I that think district that... is more red though than ours so i'm surprised there's three you know pretty well qualified democrats running because over here it's just me and i think that i'm just as strong as adam christensen or tom wells but my opponent is not he's got no like uh always got some signs but his his uh, uh website is like really old looking you know like something from the 90s Mm. And uh, he's run for Congress three times before. And uh, this is time is the least well-funded, the least endorsements. Like when he ran in 06, my opponent, he had been well known for election fraud, fighting election fraud. So he got all these endorsements, Act Blue money. He was endorsed by teachers unions, AFL-CIO. This time, nothing. He doesn't have any endorsements like that. Mm. And so we're building a lot of momentum. We got endorsed by Our Revolution in Volusia, by Florida for Bernie. I have several like professors who are chairs of, of, mm. of university departments here who endorsed me. I'm trying to get some national endorsements and attention based on my background in financial education. Uh, but anyway, I think that you're probably coming up on your 40 minute time limit. Uh, yeah, you might, might be right about that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, yeah I, I will be interviewing uh, uh, the other two people you, you, you just mentioned. Um, what I try to do that I, when I do live or any of that, any kind of like uh, what, what one of my shows, I try to uh, say who I'm what, what, what be interviewing when and all that stuff like I did earlier with uh, the yeah. cast with Madeline Hoffman and, and the upcoming one with the, the Green Party VP uh, Angela Walker and uh, Amy Sleeper, who I think is uh, also Green. I'm not sure about that right now. And my head's kind of went you know elsewhere right now, but. Uh, Hey, Chase. Yeah, that, that's what's going on as far as the part goes. Uh, 
Let's see. Uh, I I told you that I do uh, code pens. Like I, I I go onto a specific website and I make and I, I make a website that I can actually uh, promote uh, uh, other a business or promote a cadet. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, would you mind if I did that for you and just for hell of it? Sure. Sure. You said okay. making shirts or something. Uh, well, no, that, that was a while back. Uh, yeah. I asked, I asked if I, can, if I can use your image on a shirt uh, for, yeah. for for my network, and you said yes. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. I was referring to the code pen. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll 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 send I'll send, tweet you a, co a couple code pens I've done, and then you okay. can let me know if you want me if you want me if you want yeah, to yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh, and let me plug my like info. So as yeah, I yeah, said, uh, uh, I'll do a little recap real quick. So yeah, my name's Dr. Richard Thrip. I'm a PhD in education. I'm a husband, father, teacher of the next generation of teachers, 28 years old, and I'm running for Congress in the area I know very well. And uh, I'm going to try to make a big difference. And our team of volunteers is already making a difference. We're also running to be precinct committee men and women, my wife and I, for the Democratic Party of Volusia County. So we want to make a lasting impact either way. So I'm running for Congress here. And my name is Richard Thrip, And that is spelled T-H-R-I-P-P. You can see it over there, actually. Yeah. But uh, you go on the internet. If you just type in thrip.com, you'll find it. It'll go right to my website. And then on the internet, on like Twitter, thrip2020. Uh, same on Instagram. We're on Facebook. It's thrip for Congress. And uh, if you're in the 6th District, which is all of Flagler and Volusia counties, as well as parts of two other counties, you can vote for me now. You're getting the ballots by mail. Many people have voted already, and that's for the primary, which is on August 18th. Uh, we're the epicenter for coronavirus, and I think that people are seeing that there's a big need for Medicare for all, mm -hmm. for um, universal basic income, for like real relief that helps people who are working so hard and struggling, about to be evicted, uh, being told that they have to go back to school even when it's not safe to go back to school. Uh, do you know if you guys are going to have an in-person ballot uh, voting or is it going mail-in ballot or? Yeah, yeah, they are doing in-person ballots too. Um, actually here, uh, about one third of Democrats have signed up to vote by mail. And so many of them have already voted, probably about 15,000 mm -hmm. have already voted in this primary. But yeah, the early voting in Volusia is August 8th to August 15th, 8 to 6 p.m. There's six different places at that, like Daytona Beach, Port Orange, and um, New Smyrna Beach, and Ormond Beach, DeLand, and uh, Deltona. Well, would you be having someone um like uh taking like um video clips of the people in line and all that stuff yeah yeah i think I, I don't remember if you're allowed to take pictures of the people in line but we're planning to be there at least some of the time as much as we can with different volunteers wearing masks and being safe but giving out literature at the early voting sites and then on election day on august 18th we'll be at some of the sites uh, there's many more on election day and a lot of them you can't actually campaign at because florida made a law to say you have to be more than 150 feet from the door to do it and some of these election sites you can't because the, the parking lot is not, is not 150 feet away uh but there's fewer of those now because there's not enough people to work the polls you know it's so dangerous with coronavirus we had 12,000 cases today we have over 400,000 and governor ron DeSantis, as we call him is a moron <laughs> moron DeSantis is just following what trump says which is lunacy not taking the virus seriously at all yeah. Um, so we're trying to get everybody to vote by mail. You can actually go on the internet or you can call and get signed up by August 8th. And then you'll be signed up till 2022 to vote by mail. And it's, you don't even have to pay postage except in Flagler County. But if you're in Volusia County, which most people are, if they're in this district, mm -hmm. the postage is paid by mm -hmm. the supervisor of elections. Okay. We recommend voting by mail. It works very well. I've met Lisa Lewis. She's really nice. Uh, she's running a great operation at the supervisor of elections mm. office. Okay. Well, do you and then know we'll what... go up against uh, Walsh in November and Oct uh, September is when ballots will go out for that. Mm. Uh, for mail ballots, will go out at the end of September, which is very soon for the general after we win the primary. Okay. Yeah, uh, if you so... want to donate, I'm on Act Blue. It's a, or you can type in thrip.com slash donate into your internet. Or uh, just go on my Twitter or whatever. There's a link to my Act Blue, and uh, yeah, we get money coming in every day. The past week, we've got $700 contributed on Act Blue. Mm -hmm.
I spent more than that. I put in my own money um, as well because it costs ten thousand dollars just to get on the ballot in Florida. It's crazy. No other state charges that much. Mm. And then I, we just got van access, which was thirty five hundred dollars, and we're trying to use that. It's really a lot of money. Like you have to have money to do it. I, I think it's not fair for the for the older people around the area. Are you going to? Uh, do you see you got a van? Oh, uh, no, it's a software, it's called Voter Access Network for uh, oh, see, NG, okay. NGP, Florida Democratic Party. Uh, yeah, they have that. We were trying to use something else, but it didn't work too well. So we had to uh, well, pay for it. Well, how about for the ones that, uh, that live in those counties that don't have uh, mail-in ballot access, uh, would they uh, would they might be like able to drive them to, uh, to uh, the ballot places or? We probably won't be doing that because of the coronavirus, but I will tell you that all of the counties, everywhere in Florida, you can vote by mail. I was just okay. telling you one of the counties here, uh, they don't give you a stamp. Like all the other counties make it in this district is four counties okay. so that you don't, have, you don't have to put a stamp. But for Flagler County, which is Palm Coast, the biggest right. city in Flagler Beach, uh, you have to have a, 50, a U.S. postage stamp. Oh, I see. Most older people tend to know how to use postage stamps, but younger people, a lot of younger people have never used a postage stamp. They don't even have one, you know, okay. so they got to go get one. Mm -hmm. And that could be a little impediment because sometimes people don't vote if they got to have obstacles put in their way. So mm -hmm. I wish Flagler County was doing that, but we just found out they're not because they didn't even mm -hmm. put it on their website. I had oh, to wow. email all of them and ask, like, are you doing it or not? I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would say vote by mail and don't go anywhere if you can avoid it. I mean, we went to the beach a couple of days ago, but it was Thursday and there was nobody there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, coronavirus is very serious. Uh, I've been to about six Black Lives Matter protests. I try to support as much as I can. But it turned out to show with some research done that that was a lot safer than mm -hmm. being indoors. When yeah. you're outdoors, it's safer than being indoors. And it's always best to have a mask and if everyone has a mask and if you're staying six feet or more apart as well. Well, that's a good message on that one. Thanks for, yeah. thanks for sharing that. Yeah, uh, but as you said, yeah, uh, it, yeah, might be I might be into that break by minute mark. So. Uh, yeah. Well, you might have the paid version because I noted that it's not warning no, us about I, it's I, going. I, oh, okay. I'm very cheap that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I I like to thank you for joining me. It was great, it's great to talk to you. Uh, I've been trying to do this for a while, I think, uh, and I look yeah. forward to uh, to seeing the results of, uh, of, of your election, which I'm sure going to do very well, if not win. Thank so, you, uh, Calvin. Thank you. Yeah, I think we're going to win. It's my first time ever running for office, though, so I'm nervous. It's like, yeah. uh, like, are we going to win? I don't know. Like, it seems like we are. Everyone we ask has never heard of my opponent. <laughs> so I was well, like, it sounds like, you have, it sounds like you have a very good chance of doing that then. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the best opportunity in the whole state of Florida. If you look at all the congressional districts, not mm -hmm. talking about state legislature. Yeah. It's really over, over, um, under, under looked. What's yeah. the word? Um, overlooked, overlooked. Not yeah. overlooked. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I will let you know when, uh, when this is up by, uh, by, uh, uh, uh um, tweeting you the link to it. Uh, All right, and, and, yeah. and as I said, I don't edit anything, so everything will be up there. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's fine. I think it went pretty well. Just next time, put your camera down a little more because your face, I forgot to tell you, is cut off. I didn't oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Now I'm sorry. I, I wasn't even thinking of it, but then I'm sorry. I, yeah. 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 My it, wife, oh, my wife set this up. I'm terrible at setting stuff up, <laughs> but she put behind me my diploma and uh, this picture. When I, that was the last time you could graduate in person was December 2019. Uh, well, I'm lucky I graduated then because otherwise I would never have got to do it in person. Yeah. Well, thanks for letting me know as far as the camera part goes. It's probably best with my my other mug anyway. But uh, anyway. Oh. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but thank you, thanks again for joining me. And uh, maybe we could do this another time. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll have a little victory lap after we win the primary. That could be fun. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, take care. Thank you. You too. Good luck. Bye. Thank you. Bye.